You're on. Go for it. I mean, that's like too no, much to no, handle. No, this is a true story. I got so many funny stories from this complex, you would die. So I said, well, they Probably would. You went people's <laughs> windows and you were showing your butt. And he goes, no, 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 I wasn't. I said, okay, I'm going to believe you this time, but I don't want any perverts in this place, so don't do it anymore. <laughs> so about a week after that, I get a knock on my door. It's another lady from the complex, and she's like, Jenny, that new guy is in the pool in his underwear. And I was Ew. like, what? And I go out there and I go, Malin. Here and he gets out of the pool and he's in a pair of white boxers and of course after they're wet they're freaking see through and he walks okay. up and I said Malin I can see your wiener and your raisinette <laughs> I personally do not choose to see your wiener and your raisinette and neither do any of the other ladies in here I said don't you have some shorts and he said no so I went down to Cole that day and I bought him a pair of shorts that were on the he could swim. So you did. So you you bought him one. some shorts. And this is the 84-year-old man. No, he was 60. He was 60. a 60-year-old guy. And that's where I knew that I needed to start kind of paying attention to him. So when I wouldn't see him for three or four days at a time, I'd go knock on his door. Right. And, you know, I'd just say, Malin, are you doing okay? Are you decent? And he'd say, yes. I'd say, can I come in? And he'd be sitting on his bed. And he was losing weight. And he was not doing good. He's the one so with I the heart problems. And then I end up finding him, finding him dead. Yeah. So let me get to the story of... Okay. Let's do the good story. Good story. Not that he, you know, finding him dead wasn't a good story. I mean, he moved on, but shoot, you know, that's really hard to do. I don't know how you did that. I probably would have... I don't know what I would have well, thought. I have like no Mom said, I, if I hadn't taken him in here as a resident, she said, do you think any other manager anywhere else would have even checked on him? He could have laid there for a long time. Oh. So... You know, that made me feel good because, you know, I did, I, you know, I don't know what he did in his life. I don't know if he was a good man or a bad man. His family lived down in the south and they brought him up here and pretty much dumped him on my doorstep. Yeah, but you know, that's how you are anyway. You always, you always take care of people. I mean, that's how it's, you've always been that way. Okay, tell me the story. Uh, tell me the funny one. All right. Here we go. All right, so I'm, I'm watching TV. There's a show on this 84-year-old woman. She was talking about how she just got her, had her first grandbaby. She had her daughter when she was 52 years old. Mm -hmm. And I was sitting here, and I was kind of emotional. I was crying, and I thought, I'll never have my own daughter or a grandchild. And I thought, well, I'm only going to be 49 this year. I could still do it. So I kind of turned the TV off. I was all like, I'm going to do this. I'm going to have a baby. And I went over to Mom's, and I said, and we were all sitting Alon and my nephew Jason and his girlfriend and their new baby were there. And I said, I want to have a baby. And Jason's like, well, I got a friend, you know, he might do it. And so we kind of laughed it off. And I said, well, I really want a midget baby. That's what I'd like more than anything. A midget if God baby? If give me one right now, I would have it. What kind of baby? A midget. A midget. A little nugget. A little nut nugget midget baby. I would love one. Okay. <laughs> Well, anyways, we kind of laughed it off. They left, and me and Mom went to dinner. And about an hour later, we're at dinner, and I get a phone call from my nephew, Jason. He's like, Aunt yeah, Jenny, I talked to my friend, and he, he's willing to do it. He wants to know what you're doing tomorrow night. And I go, Jason, I'm on my period. I want to wait till I'm ovulating. And he goes, oh, just do it. You know, you can get pregnant any time. We just need to get going. And I said, no, if I'm going to have sex with a man, I want to, like, do the optimum time. Uh, time this time if i can only have to do it once that's what i want so we hung up the phone me and mom have dinner i come home i'm sitting here watching tv and about an hour later i get a phone call and i didn't recognize the number i usually don't answer but i thought all right whatever you know i'll pick it up and i go hello and he goes hey jenny it's nick and i'm thinking fucking jason gave him my number already and i go hey nick how are you and he goes I'm good. I was just wondering what time we could get together tomorrow. And I go, I'm not ovulating yet. And he goes, what? And I go, who is this? And he goes, 
Nicholas, I'm writing apartment number seven with you. We're both to sign my lease tomorrow. <laughs> this really happened to you? <laughs> I never give my cell phone number to tenants. Wait, so I thought you were kidding battery. with me. This really yeah. happened to you? This really happened. I thought you were kidding. I was dead that day, so I called him that morning on my cell phone, oh my not God. thinking about it. And he called me back on my cell phone, and I'm thinking, you know, tomorrow, <laughs> Jason, oh, this, so you know, this guy that <laughs> want to have sex, and this poor kid is like thinking, uh, what the hell do I got to do to get into this place? <laughs> Right, right Eight when it's ovulating time. That's how you move in. <laughs> so him and his girlfriend come the next day to sign the lease, and I had to tell them. And they were laughing so hard, they were crying. So now whenever I see them around the complex, I'm like, hey, baby, daddy. <laughs> and when, when they give me letters, like if there's something wrong in their apartment, they sign it, baby, daddy. I am so sure. I thought this was a setup. I thought you were setting me up with a joke, but you were being honest and and true. And I, mean, I can I can fax you. I can show you the last letter that gave me that they were having a problem with their oven, and they signed they signed it, baby daddy. <laughs> I'm not ovulating yet. <laughs> Shoot. I'm not, I'm not How do I get into the place? <laughs> oh my God. Oh. Well, funny. We have laughed, all of us, Mom. I called Mom right away, and she emailed her, all her friends. Oh, uh, that's friends perfect. That knew me before I even came out of my mom's valley down in L.A. Her husband, Skip, she uh, emailed Mom, and she said, Skip has told everybody at the Starbucks, everybody at the store, Jenny is freaking famous down here right now. <laughs> Yeah, as if Wheel of Fortune didn't do it for you. Oh, God. Everybody at work. I mean, I, it's just, sometimes I'll walk in and my, my general manager, if he's there, he'll be like, you have a lighting hat. I'm like, shut up. <laughs> All right. Before I shut this off, I want you to say, uh, let's see, say something funny like, uh, I don't know, call me a schmuck or something. <laughs> yeah, you know you're a fuck. Hi, I love you too. Don't hang up, schmuck. <laughs> Hold on a second. I'm gonna Hang cut on. this. I'm gonna cut this. That is a funny story, man. <laughs> Hold on a minute.